Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. Today is Thursday, November 25th. We made it, everybody, to Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and I hope you all have a good day. You watch some football, you eat some delicious food, you hang out with your family. Hopefully, don't get into many big arguments with your family. Hopefully, the topics are civil. Hopefully, they're not. A, you know, it's not a bad day. It's a good day. You eat all day, you watch football, and you talk with your family. You have fun with your family. Let's, let's just start with that. Have fun, right? I mean, this is that's what this is all about. These holidays of why we create them and why we celebrate them. Because, for one, we enjoy our families like Thanksgiving. Two, um, we enjoy food. And three, in the process, let, let's have fun. Let's just have a good time and just have fun. Let loose, have fun. Hopefully you got the day off if you didn't, if you're driving at the moment on a job, going to work, whatever, that you could still listen to this podcast and, you know, still feel nice and toasty with my voice in your ear. Because I know that, you know, it's just a wonderful time and I'm trying to make it good as for many people as possible. And I hope that I'm doing that correctly right now. I really, really do. Because... Like I said on this podcast, this is my favorite holiday, and it has been for a while. And one of the reasons why, well, actually three, I mean, but I guess I can break it, call it into one right now, is the three F's of Thanksgiving. The three F's. Um, and they go food, football, no, no, yeah, food, football, and family. Those are the three F's of Thanksgiving, in my opinion. And I'm going to start by listing what I enjoy the most about them. I mean, and why they make the holiday for me just so special and why I just can't get enough of it. So, food. I mean, really, the the crown jewel of Thanksgiving is food. And not because, you know, I mean, not because, well, you eat food every day, Alex. It's always the food. I mean, y- y- you know, it's it's not that. It's the type of food. Thanksgiving food, in my opinion, is some of the best foods in, th- that I've ever had. Truly it is. It's simple, it's classic, traditional, and if you do it correctly, it's usually always good. There's, You should never really be failing at this time. Like, okay, if, if, you're, if you've been living in America or if you've been here your entire life, you've been cooking Thanksgiving meals for about, or helping out, or shopping for them, or, you know, whatever, preparing. If you're like, you know, 30-something, 20, uh, 40-something, this should be easy, man. This should be easy. You get a turkey, a ham, some mashed potatoes, some stuffing, dinner rolls. I mean, that's really the basics that you need for food on Thanksgiving, That really is it. Maybe you can have some green bean casserole. I've never really had it personally. Um, You could get some cranberry sauce. Not a huge fan of actually. Uh, And, you you know, if you want to get crazy, you know, you can get like something crazy like a traducan. If you've ever had that before, that's a turkey, a chicken, and a duck all in one uh, mold of meat. It's actually, you know, quite tasty. And uh, if 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 you're if you're you know in the mood for that, if you want to spice it up a bit, I actually think that it's pretty good. And if you're thinking like, well, what about dessert? I mean, for one, people love pies, right? You can get apple pie, which is my personal all-time favorite. You can get pumpkin, which I actually despise. You can get a a berry pie, whether it be a straw or a crayon or a blue those type of berries. Um, people like the cream pies. Not that one. Um, banana cream, coconut cream. Um, I think there's like a chocolate cream pie. Um, but the, yeah, you can get like so many other types of pies and just feel like it's, oh, it's it's just, it really brings in the, the you know, there's just so much that you could choose and so much that you can just, you know, enjoy your time with. And who the, you know, what brings people together more than food? I don't think there's one thing that does that more. 
I mean, sure, you can maybe Christmas with presents and all and all that, and like birthdays with presents and you know people that you love and other holidays. But the majority of human, you know, holidays has been the main driver of people coming is the food. Like we have, you know, depending on who you are, um, you can have tamales on Christmas or Christmas ham or Thanksgiving food, or barbecue at the 4th of July. I mean, food really is the crown jewel of Thanksgiving. And it always saddens me. It puts a frown on my on my face. And not a, you know, not, not like a, like I'm tearing up, but I'm always like, huh, really? Hmm. That's kind of disappointing. Frown on my face is when people are like, well, I like Thanksgiving, I enjoy my family, but I'm not a big fan of the food. And I always think to myself, they must not have had, they must not have good Thanksgiving food there. Whoever's cooking, doing that, you know, doing the business and, and getting everything prepped up must not quite grasp how Thanksgiving food is or how, or, or, or how it should be. You know, and like you see all these cookbooks and recipes online of how to change some things and like make things better or cook them a different way. Um, I've, I've always been more of like, just keep it basic and keep it simple. And then it'll, it should taste good no matter what you do. You know, whether it's, uh, roasting a turkey in a roaster or your oven or smoking it, you could do all that. But you know, I'm actually going back on what I said right now because I think that this this method of cooking a turkey is actually superior to them all. And I've had roasted turkeys, I've had oven cooked turkeys, but no other no nothing compares and this is this nothing compares to a deep fried turkey. I have to admit. It is so delicious. That you just, for me, there's like no other way to cook the turkey, in my opinion, other than deep frying it. Uh, and I and I know you're probably like, well, Alex, I've seen the videos where they start a fire, and you know it goes bad and it goes wrong, and it's it's terrible. It's a terrible thing, Alex. Well, yes, I have seen that too. And believe me, before we did it last year, I was also ter- uh, terrified, because I was like, well, 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 we've seen the videos, the turkey. He catches fire, the oil just splashes everywhere, it's a giant mess, and I was like, well, well, this is an electric f- uh, fryer, that's what, you know, my my mom was like, this is an electric f- fryer, we should not have that problem, and I was like, cool, let's, let's try it out, and actually, it cooks faster, and it just tastes better, it's, the flavors just lock in more, because it's literally bathing in that oil, and just being delicious and 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 it's just amazing it's crispier juicier and it cooks faster i mean that i mean that should automatically say yes we'll deep fry the turkey now we will deep fry it or at least try to also the safest way possible you know don't just drop it in there you got to ease that thing in there you got to make sure the temperature is right you got to ease that thing in there also you got to also because i don't want anybody coming at me and say i try to do it and listen you should always be supervised when you do this and check the poundage of your turkey, how much oil you need, and the temperature, and the proper instructions on how to do that. Whether it be, I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure it's all, you know, ease it in there because it's a giant bird, by the way. It's huge. You can't just drop it in like a chicken tender and be like, oh, oh well, that's how I make chicken. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And now my house is on fire. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, be careful. Do your research on it and how to how to fry a turkey, because you know, it, it, I, everybody's seen videos on YouTube. It can get pretty bad, it can get awful. Um, that's F number one, and and make sure make sure before you judge the food, you right before you say I don't like Thanksgiving food. It's not my favorite. It's like make sure you have some good food. Make sure you get like if you're going to a friend's house or family or relative's house or whatever. Know who's cooking the food and ask them, hey, how is their food? Is it good? And if they say yes, it's delicious, then you the good the chances are the chances are that you're in good hands. Now if you've if you're going to somebody else's house and you don't know if their cooking's good, you might be in for either good or bad food. Because I have had good and bad Thanksgiving food. When it's bad, 
it's like man, eh, it's it's just it's it's you, you, it's forgettable. But when it's good, man, oh my goodness, it just warms you up. And then you could take a nap afterwards after after you eat. It's just it's one of the best holidays of all time. I mean seriously, it, the whole focus is on the food. Truly, it is. I mean, there is no better holiday in my opinion. Still to this day. So that's F number one. The food always got to have that good, that nice food, and just yeah. Uh, really get everything on the plate. I'm usually pretty cool with everything on the plate, by the way, too. I'm a big believer in filling up that plate, whether it be with a ton of turkey, a ton of ham, mashed potatoes, stuffing, gravy, a dinner roll, maybe some veg, whether it be corn, green beans, green bean casserole, mac and cheese, except for that cranberry sauce. Get that shit out of here, man. Not a big fan of it. I like cranberry juice. I like... But just something with that sauce, man. And I don't know if it's from a can or whatever. Or it's just because the way it looks. And I'm like, is that jello? And you taste it. It's like, that's not jello. I don't know what it is, but it's just. It's never been my thing, man. It's never been my thing. And I just. And I see people mixing it together with other things like stuffing and mashed potatoes and turkey all in one bite. And I'm just like, oh, but I don't want that. That red shit there, man. It's just I don't I don't dig it. I don't I don't vibe with it. So I vote and maybe maybe like I said in the last episode, maybe my palate will change and I will enjoy it more. But uh, you know, at, at this very moment, I'm still not a fan of the cranberry sauce, even though it looks like Jello, even though it has the kind of like the consistency of Jello. I don't know. Maybe if I have like some actual homemade cranberry sauce, like somebody like mushes them together. It makes an actual pretty good cranberry sauce. Maybe that'll be delicious, but, you know, until then, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. But I've been dilly-dallying enough with that first F. The second F, in my opinion, is football. Because we are already in football season right now, and I'm not talking about the actual season by the NFL standards. When it starts in September, ending in February. No, I'm talking about the actual season. If you didn't know, in my mind, in my mind, my my mind right now, I no longer call it fall or autumn. I call it football season because it just makes me happier, and it just it's so, it's so associated with that weather type and the cloud cover and the long, uh, the shorter days and it getting darker faster, the chill in the air. I just, it just, I'm, I'm just giving it the title. Of football season and football season is so precious because we only get it for like maybe five months because we start in september october november december january february for like five five and a half months maybe five because we start like like i think we start like mid-september so it's like roughly around five months of football and it's just and when it's gone it's gone and football in in November and on Thanksgiving is such a treat to us as as Americans who watch this game and love this game no matter who plays good or bad bad you know bad matchup good matchup bad good game bad game whatever it may be you got to sit down on Thanksgiving and watch at least a full game because there's nothing better than hearing smelling your kitchen it's like, oh, my, my my entire house smells delicious. Forget a gingerbread house, man. I want to eat my own house. And then just clicking on football, whether it be Joe and, Joe and Troy or Jim and Tony or Alan Chris. I mean, it's just, I mean, this year I believe it is uh, Drew and um, and Mike Tirico. But, you know, it's just, it's always a staple in 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 my heart, my household, I just love it. And it just elevates the love for it even more because it, the, the season and the food and the football just, they, they, they just, com- they, they really just appreciate one another and, 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 uh, and just, it's amazing. I'm, I'm struggling to find that word, but it, it's just, it's amazing. It's one of the greatest feelings ever. When you wake up and your kitchen smell, oh, it's just the best. And I will say this though. And this is a little bit of a, a preview, so if you listen to this after the games, it's kind of going to suck. But um, I am not a fan 
this year of the matchups that we are going to be getting. I will admit it right now and right here. Um, first of all, Bears and Lions. I mean, two backup quarterbacks and Andy Dalton and Tim Boyle. I mean, this is just going to be an absolute... But This might be one of the worst games of this entire year. Now, I'm pretty sure that the NFL is like, you know what, these guys are going to be pretty good. We hope that they're good. And that when they're releasing the schedule, like, yeah, this is going to be a game, good game. And then you look at the game, we're actually going to see it, and you're like, oh, no, they got it all wrong here. This is not going to be good. Then we got the Raiders and the Cowboys, who, I mean, honestly, this this might be a good game, but it's just like, I feel like it's just for namesake. Raiders, Cowboys, I mean, that that kind of. That kind of feels like it's old, more of an old school matchup that you would like to see rather than now. But it's like whatever. I mean, it's another game. It's a blessing. I'll watch that. Sure, it's probably going to be bad though, but we'll see. And then you got Bills and Saints. You're like, okay. I mean, first of all, the Bills have been playing pretty bad lately. I mean, it's 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 no, uh, it's 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 not in, uh, it's not invisible. It, it, they're just playing pretty badly. And then on the Saints end, you don't have Jameis Winston. You have Trevor Simeon and possibly making a, a quarterback appearance for maybe multiple more plays than, you know, last week. Taysom Hill, who just signed a four-year deal, he's going to be there for a while. I mean, he's in the plans. So, I mean, that, that one's like, okay, cool. I mean, it's just, I don't know what the NFL was thinking, but this year's matchups for Thanksgiving are kind of... But they're kind of bad, honestly. I mean, it's just, I mean, I would have expected more, but, you know, whatever. We're still getting football, though. We should still count our blessings that we're actually getting three games for Thanksgiving because, and I feel like because the teams know that Thanksgiving is such a great tradition for the NFL and playing on Thanksgiving that they play harder and they play better than they would if it was just some rinky dink Thursday night game where they you know they started off pretty hot this year but after you know like the first like eight weeks it's been pretty mediocre to say the least so hopefully we can get some good games I'm, I I have no absolute faith that they'll be dynamite games but I'm also holding up that they might surprise us and hopefully that we can actually get some good entertainment during that day because I don't give a two I don't give two F's, two SH's about that par- parade at all, really. I Man, I just don't. It brings me back to memories of being in parades in high school band. Like, I just, I don't want to be, and like being marching down a street and playing an instrument in the cold weather and, and just having to march down. Marching is not easy, bro. I mean, it's pretty annoying being on time and shit and, stepping off with your toes up and left foot first left right left right it's like ugh, i don't i don't i just i get ptsd watching that shit not to say i didn't have a fun time i did but it's like i absolutely would not do it again if i'm like being honest i would not do it again it's like college like you enjoyed college and you enjoyed like the relationships that you made and like the stuff that you had to do the projects but let's be honest you would not do it again you would not be like oh yeah let's go do this for another four years again yeah, assignments, deadlines, homework, professors. No, you wouldn't do that again. There's no fucking shot you would. So it's like, it's fun, but it's like I would never, ever, ever, ever do it again. It's it's like my brain back then was fine with that. I was fine doing it back then. Today's me? Absolutely not. I just, I, I don't picture myself doing that ever again. Um, But yeah. Football will be back. I'm not watching that parade, bro. I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to watch. Wait, wait, wait. Is it? No, no, no. The Puppy Bowl's on the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's right. They make shit so you don't have to watch football. It's it's criminal in my mind. That w- they, they're, they're giving people outlets to not watch football. And I know that the parade is pretty early, so I'm, I think that one might not be as bad as the Puppy Bowl, but still, it's like, why are you making shit so we people don't watch the Super Bowl? Are you absolute? Are you kidding Jeez. Anyway, that's the second F, the third F, and my last F, for the reason of it being the most important, you know, the best for last, is family. You know, as Dom Toretto would say it in Fast and Furious, family. 
It's, it, it's the number one. And I know I joke and I say that food and football are more important, but, you know, at the end of the day, family is really the most important one. I mean, it truly is. Um, without family, without people that you love, without people that you care about, what is really Thanksgiving? I mean, it's a meal and that's it, right? A meal, a game, a couple games and that's it, right? But when you have your family there, with the food, with the football, it's just, it's just, it's much, it's, it's better on so many levels you can't even really explain it. You, it, you feel right. It feels right. You feel at home. You feel loved. Even though if you got to go do something, hey, I need help with this, or go get me that, or do this for me, or do that for me. It's like, yeah, I'll do it because I feel good. It's Thanksgiving. And I feel great. So take, you know, always look back and take appreciation to remember to be thankful for your family, for your friends too. Friends too. I mean, like, usually I don't really have Thanksgiving with friends. You know, that's more for Friendsgiving. But also, you got to be thankful for the people that are in your life. Family <coughs> and your friends. Truly, it's it's one of the better, my, it, again, my favorite holiday. My favorite one. No gifts. Even though I enjoy gifts. No no overly played songs, which I do like from time to time, but it really you boil it down to what are you thankful for? Thankful for my family. And for food and for football. I mean, and that's just an easy way to show your appreciation and your love is being thankful and reminding people and football and food that they that you are thankful for them. How do you do it? Well, I'm going to eat a ton of food. Well, I'm going to talk to my sister a lot or my brother or my uncle. And I'm going to watch every game. And not just every game. Every snap of every game. Every commercial of every game. Every halftime of every game to show how much I am thankful for everything that's happening on Thanksgiving. Absolutely everything I'm thankful for. And you know what? That's just the best. It really is. And uh, I just want to, you know, let everybody know that uh, I too wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. And I know this is mid-show. We're not uh, we're not done yet, but you know, I'm just getting choked up about you know, Thanksgiving and all that. And I, uh, it's like, uh, you know, you could just uh, you could kind of lose sight of some things of what you're really thankful for. You know, the roof over your head. Yeah, the um, the money in your pocket, your health. You know, you could be, you know, getting sick or something. You know, thankful for your health that you're not feeling bad, that you're feeling good, that you have food in your belly. Because some people don't have that, man. You know, if you're like been like me, like you have food on the table, you have food, you have access to food, internet, and all that. You can do all these things. A lot of people don't have that. And not to bring the show down, by the way. But it's just, it reminds you of what you're thankful for. And to make sure that you show your thankfulness. Because that's what really matters. Showing what you are thankful for. And being kind to one another. And hopefully you don't get into any fights on Thanksgiving. Depending on how big your gatherings are. There's always a couple people. Whether it be aunts, uncles... Mom, dad, whatever it may be, that want to get into fights about some things that have been happening in the world where it's so dark and you don't know what's happening, really. It's like, why is this happening? Who To who? To she? To him? Why? I mean, yeah, you, it's like, what, but why do you care? You're with your family. Why do you got to talk about that? Appreciate that someone who's, you know, you might not see so often that you can see now at the holidays. And, you know, just embrace them. Have some fun. Go outside. You don't even have to do really do anything. I mean, the weather's pretty good. You can just sit out there and sit on a chair and just talk with somebody. Maybe have a drink, a beer, a cocktail, a soda, maybe some water. You know, anything. Socialize. Um, have fun. Maybe grab the football and throw it around. Or maybe baseball. <laughs> or... Or 
a basketball or a soccer ball. Do anything. Have fun. Play some sports. Do something that makes you happy, that you're thankful that you can do. Or, uh, you know, or be like, you know, most people that are like me just watching football. That's it. Don't just watch football, but do something that makes you happy. And for me, tuh, Lord knows how much fun I have watching football and how, how happy it makes me. So I'm just going to keep doing that and be thankful that I can do that. You know, I'm absolutely thankful that I'm able to watch football and that I have Sunday ticket every every Sunday that I wake and watch every game, every snap of every game. Oh, God, it's the best. Um, so those are the three F's of of Thanksgiving that I think that are super important in my eyes. And that's, you know, you could add more. You could add um, friends. You could add um, fortune. You're thankful for fortune? I don't know. Something like that. You're thankful for... Um, the uh, What also starts with an F, guys? Flowers? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You can add whatever you want. But I'm just saying, those are my three Fs of Thanksgiving that are super important. And that really, you know, just help me appreciate that holiday so much. And that, that let me allow me to have so much fun on that holiday. And that's just why I love it. Now we're going to be moving on to uh, no more Thanksgiving talk. We're going to be talking about... Uh, the newest show that appeared on Disney Plus today, actually, uh, or not today, the newest show that appeared on Wednesday, the new Marvel show, which is called Hawkeye, starring Jeremy Renner and Haley Steinfeld. And uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure if I was going to check out this show, but I'm like, you know what? I got nothing other best, uh, you know, I got nothing else to do. Why don't we just check it out? You know, at the moment, I was just like, let's just check it out. They released two episodes. One was 49 minutes. The other one was like 51 minutes. So pretty bulky, you know, episodes. Not holding any content back. Not half an hour bullshit, but, you know, that full hour. When I was watching it, I'm like, first of all, uh, this is, this is probably, probably the most jokey, goofy, campy, um, very silly show, and I have not seen Loki, but the ones that I have seen, the most kiddie, friendly, again, jokey and silly show that Marvel has released in live action. Now, that's not to say that it's a bad thing and you shouldn't watch it, but I'm just letting you know. It's probably not going to be a deep, you know, engaging show that you probably were, you know, ex might have been expecting on the likes of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier or WandaVision or even Loki. I mean, I haven't seen Loki, so it might not even be like that dark of a show, but I'm not sure. But all I know is that Falcon Winter Soldier was like, you know, it was more of a of a a thriller than like a, you know, um, uh, WandaVision's like I guess you could call it a, uh, uh, maybe just like a you know, a throwback show. Like it had all those themes of like the '50s, the '60s, the '70s, '80s, '90s shows, and this one is just like boom. It's its own thing, and it's, uh, you know, besides it being campy, it's pretty touching, I will say. You really feel for the character of Hawkeye, Clint Barton, you know, played by Jeremy Renner, which we we actually, you know, get a little bit more, of you know, time with him, which is expected, because, you know, I'll be honest with you, I enjoyed Hawkeye in the first Avengers and then the second Avengers, but after that, I was just like, this guy is being pushed to the side, He's just there to be Hawkeye, and he's got a bow and arrow, and he can shoot bow and arrows, and he, he shot Ant-Man on his bow and arrow back in Civil War. That was cool, but it's like, bro, we have Iron Man and Captain America. We have Black Panther now, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. I mean, I'm sorry, bro, but you're getting pushed to the side when this all comes all these characters. 
like again like him him and black widow like as much as i enjoy them in those movies it's like yeah, there's just not much there like for you to do when it comes to like battling and fighting all these people i mean like i said like in 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 age of ultron when you got to meet his family for the first time it was like yeah this is cool i mean this is awesome this is like what we wanted to see of hawkeye like what is this guy why like does he have a family is a wife like what's his uh, situation you get all that and then it's like it kind of just goes away you don't really see much of them ever again you kind of see like you know some stuff in like Endgame and Infinity War but like it's just like he's kind of just there now you kind of forget that oh Jeremy Renner plays Hawkeye oh yeah that's cool but then but this this is not like the his introduction though you've already known him you know what he does you know you know what he's been through he's got a the show takes place a couple years after Endgame so you know after the deed is done after um uh, Black Widow dies in Endgame and he's there to see it how is he going to be coping with that how is he gonna you know go about living his life after you know the snap and all that the blip and people coming back and if he's going to be able to adjust to the world and do all that and you do get that, but it's only, again, they only released the first two episodes on Disney+, Plus, so it's not even, we're about a third of the way there. There's only going to be six episodes, so we're already going to be, we're already a third of the way there. But that's one half of the show. Uh, the other half is is Haley Steinfeld's Kate Bishop, um, who's, who's, you know, if you've seen the trailers, you get an idea that he's going to be the new, she's going to be the new um, Hawkeye-type character. You know, she even, she dresses like him. She's got the purple theme. She's got a bow and arrow. She's, uh, she's a good fighter. Uh, she's got a backstory that's, uh, that kind of was like, okay, this is a bit on the nose. Uh, of course they went, of course they do a flash, a flashback to this time to show her beginnings and, you know, her inspiration and her, you know, the forging of that character. it's like, okay, I, I wasn't expecting it to be that on the nose, but at the end of the day, what was well, I mean? What what else were they gonna do, right? Not to say that it wasn't done well. It was done well. It fitted well. But I was just like, really, at that moment, that's the flashback. That's how she decided to be what she wanted to be. Okay, all right, that's that's fine. And don't get me wrong, she's a fun character. She's very very fun. She's kind. She's more on the immature side. She's not like a Hawkeye type that's all serious. Because again, like she's like. She's like 22 in the show, so she's like, she's in college and shit. You know, she's an archer and you know does stupid shit and like has fun and all that. And she kind of has, she has like a fun personality that's nothing like hot guys. And she wants to be involved in shit and like fight crime and stuff. And you know, you know, she idolizes hot guys. She's like, she hot guys like, oh yeah, you're hot guy. Oh shit, she's so excited. And I love that too. It's it's really fun. It's a fun interaction. Uh, the thing is, I think that the two episodes that we got just weren't that strong in that, you know, that sense of building something. There's still a lot more that to be desired, and um, it just seemed okay right now. It just seems okay. Like, I'm not going to review every episode. I'm going to, want you know, review these two because they just came out. They're the talking point, points of the social media and all that right now, so I'm going to talk about it now. But once I finish the se- the series, I will you know review it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 enjoyable. It's very like I said, this is more kid friendly than the past two that I've seen. Maybe Wandavision was also more kid friendly too. Falcon Winter Soldier was definitely not as kid friendly, and then this one is much 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 more kid friendly, even more than Wandavision. I would say, even more than that. Um, it's got the, you know, the, the, the little dog that they have in the, in the posters and in, in the trailers. That's there. Everybody does a great job, though. Like, Jimmy Renner, you can tell that this guy is not phoning it in. He's, he's giving it his all. He's playing Clint Barton. He's playing a very older Clint Barton. Now, you might say, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you, you do get flashbacks in the show, like I said, from previous movies. And you can kind of tell how he's matured and gotten older and just been a little bit more wiser and the way he does his shit. And it's like, okay, this is interesting. We're getting a little bit more of a grizzled Hawkeye and how he would approach the world now of crime fighting and shit like that. Because, I mean, I would only assume that he's been done with it since the end of Endgame. So, 
I mean, I would just think that, I mean, since we haven't seen shit since then, he wouldn't be doing anything. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely more on the positive than the negative. Again, it's more kiddy and more, more silly than you probably expected, but that's just the way that they're going about it. Um, I do think that some of the fight scenes in this show are actually kind of bad, like choreographed kind of bad. They just seem like they take a while to, you know, fight and shit, and it's not that tight. It's not like it was back in uh, uh, Infinity War, Endgame, Winter Soldier, even in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you know, that just came out this year. It's just, it doesn't feel up to that quality of that, but maybe that's because of the tone of the show is more kid-friendly, so they made it more, you know, not as tense as it could be, but I just kind of thought it was like, oh, this is, this just isn't as fun to watch as the other ones, so there's that, but other than that, it's, it's, it's solid, it's solid, um, and if you have nothing else to watch, you know, if you, if you, if you dig Marvel, if you've been wanting to watch this, you're gonna like it, I think you will, I think if you're a fan of Hawkeye, you will like it. And I think if you're interested in how they're they're uh, bringing in Kate Bishop, it's also interesting of how that works, too. And you will also dig it. Um, other performances were good, solid. Not really too many cameos yet, so that's that's good. I mean, the last thing I really want is for these Marvel shows to just have so many cameo here cameo there oh you remember this guy how about that guy you remember him too don't you what about her do you remember her let it be its own thing i enjoy that more than just stuffing it full of cameos and i again this is just the first two episodes so there might be you know a couple episodes down the road maybe even more that they really you know show you hey you're in the mcu here he is or something like that um I just want to see if it can stand on its own two legs and not rely on familiarity about other, you know, other people in that universe. Let's just see how it goes, you know? But we'll see. It, it, it's solid so far. It's a solid show. And, um, yeah, I think, if again, if you dig Marvel, if you love everything that they do, you'll like it. You're going to enjoy it. It's fun. And, and don't get it twisted with the commercials. This is a very, very heavy uh, Christmassy themed show. Like, super Christmassy. Um, they play music in there. There's, uh, you know, lights around there. It takes place during Christmas time, so that's the that's like their theme. Which, hey, I mean, I, I enjoy Christmas too, and it feels like, you know, it's just perfect timing, right? You want to watch things now when it's like November, like it's, you know, cold outside, Christmassy, you know, it, it does the job done. It, it does the job well. It does get you to feel more in the spirit of Christmas and the holidays. It's like, yeah, I like this. This is enjoyable. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's solid. It's solid right now. It's it's not so far my favorite show so far. It, it, can't, it could get there. A uh, couple, you know, nitpicks there on some of the, you know, just nitpicks, uh, choreography fighting scenes are kind of yeah to me but you know there's room for improvement there's a lot of room for that um and hopefully it gets there hopefully it doesn't squander and just not you know fully deliver because you know the last thing that you want it to do right for this show is to not fully go for what it's wanting to do and show you how Kate Bishop you know will eventually become part of this whole big picture here because, I mean, this is a perfect setup. I mean, they literally got, like, the perfect, very popular actress at the time, at the right age, pretty much, to play this character, and Haley Steinfeld to do it. And, I'm, you know, I I thought that Kate Bishop, for some reason, was actually his daughter. Like, because he has a daughter in the show. And I always thought that, that Kate, that, that his sidekick was his daughter. So when they announced that Haley Steinfeld was going to be Kate Bishop... I was actually, like, surprised, like, wait a minute, but they have, like, his daughter, who's now older, like, not, no longer, like, a super young kid anymore, that could, that, that could play that role, but I guess it's not his daughter, so, like, I guess I'm fucked, um, but yeah, looking forward to it, it could be good, 
still wanting to see more though but you know they have six episodes so i'm i'm fairly confident that they'll be able to get their show um done and their story told that way you know she fits in well she's welcomed into the mcu and hopefully she'll be you know in future projects because i mean she's very young i think i think Haley's like 24 years old so she she's still like very young as an actress She's done a couple uh, movies like True Grit, very uh, back in the day. She did the Transformers Bumblebee movie, which was very, very good in my opinion. She did. Uh, she's done Dickinson, uh, that show on Apple TV, that that just finished. I think it was in its last season as at the moment. So she'll be done with that. And she's also a singer, so she's very, very talented. And um, I'm sure Mar- Marvel is trying to lock her up for a couple movies as well. And maybe even her own own show, not with you know without Jeremy Renner, maybe with other people too. So that that that's going to be interesting on how that goes. All right, moving on. All right, we're moving on to the NFL. I gave you a little bit of a taste of the games you know happening on Thanksgiving. So, but I'm going to recap a couple games from last week because last week was kind of uh, I, there were some good games. Don't get me wrong. But there was also, uh, in particular, one of the worst games that I've ever seen, really. And that was on Thursday night last week. Patriots 25, Falcons 0. I mean, if you want a little bit of an update on my fantasy team, I lost again. And because I started Mike Davis and Kyle Pitts. Now, you cannot play in the NFL. I don't care who you play against. You should not be scoring, or you should not be not scoring any points that should be illegal. I mean, if you're the Atlanta Falcons, I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how bad Matt Ryan is. Seven points? Are you kidding? It was, it was, and it, it's not like it was like, uh, you know, like, it, 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 it was just so frustrating to watch because they would get together and and have a couple of decent series of plays and just flounder and squander their opportunities and not do anything about it and it would just be so bad so mediocre it was like so hard to watch frustrating it's so bad i mean in the meantime yeah fucking mac jones going 22 for 26 and just absolutely playing great football and then Matt Ryan I mean Jesus Christ went 19 for 28 153 yards and two interceptions now Mac Jones also had an interception as well but he also had a touchdown and then to seal it off Josh Rosen throws a pick six towards the end of the game I mean you got it it's just it's so bad I mean they were also on an uptick they were playing better they were five four and five they, they, they could have potentially been 5-5, five and five, and then they just absolutely shit the bet on this game. It's just like, what are you guys doing? And you saw, like, fucking Matt Ryan absolutely yell at his team on the sideline, and, like, I would have yelled too, to be honest with you. I mean, like, that's just unacceptable. Like, how are they, like, and also, I can't really point to whose fault it is because you got receivers dropping balls, but you got Matt Ryan who can't throw the ball as well. Like, he, th- he just throws, like, boneheaded throws like in, into other people to double coverage triple coverage it's like what are you doing dude <laughs> like what are you actually doing this is terrible football like actually terrible football and then okay but yeah i'm just mad at them i'm mad i'm not even a falcons fan but i'm mad at them that's just insane i should not be this mad at them moving on though colts beat the bills uh 41 to 15 actually stunning to me Stunning because I was riding the Colts off way at the he- way at the beginning of the season because they yet they were like in some tight games there was nothing really there that convinced me that they they got Carson Wentz for the first uh, their first year with Carson Wentz Frank Reich is their head coach I'm actually watching the HBO uh, Hard Knocks in season right now and that's actually uh, pretty good but uh you know. They just did not seem like they were going to be fully uh, grasping their potential and fully showing what they could do because they were so new. You know, I don't care 
if Carson knew Frank Reich and was that was his mentor back in Philadelphia. This is a new team, a new offense. He's not the coordinator. He's the head coach now. So he's kind of got to have a little bit of a different relationship with Frank Reich. But now it seems to be like coming all together now. I mean, they're 6-5 and five now. The And they just blew out the Bills 41-15. to 15. I could not believe what was happening. They continued to use Josh Allen poorly and not run the ball. Stephon Diggs had a touchdown, thank God, because I needed that. But that's it. That I mean, that, I mean, he just he was playing so bad. I mean, Josh Allen went 22, 21 for 35, two touchdowns and two interceptions. I mean, I don't know what's happening. Rushing yards. Matt Breda, five carries and 51 yards. Everybody was talking about it at the end of the at the end of the Sunday on Sunday night. They got to just run the ball, run the ball, and run the ball. They just but you you can't do that if you have you know no running backs. And you just, if you keep using Josh Allen to run, that's just, it's, it's, you're just putting him at more risk for injuries and like, you know, getting hurt and shit, which he can't do. Sorry. I know that he's durable and he's super strong, but that's not, <laughs> that is not what he's meant for. He's going to get killed out there. I'm moving on. But again, <clears throat> actually, before I move on, before I move on, I think, I still think, I mean, Carson still does some, pretty questionable throws I will say that but as a team the way they are playing right now and who they just beat who we thought or who I thought was going to be in the Super Bowl um this is this is shaking up to be quite the division story I mean now that now now if you're the Tennessee Titans you got to be looking over your shoulder like uh oh who's coming up now oh shoot it's not the Texans it's not the Jaguars it's those damn Colts again and to, to be fair, to be fair, the Titans are still playing pretty good ball. But we'll get to them. They had a pretty bad outing in Tennessee this past that last week. Um, but the Ravens beat the Bears 16-13. Uh, to 13. I mean, I barely checked on, on this game. I mean, no Lamar Jackson. You're going to guarantee I'm not going to see a whole lot of highlights out of this. Now, I know that they you know, won, you know, with... Uh, um, Tyler Huntley, but uh, you know, still, um, it's just not just not as exciting, you know. And and Lamar's out with an illness that isn't COVID. I don't even know what it is, man. I mean, people are saying like it's his stomach or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really really dove into it, but it's just it doesn't sound very good either. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Um, but they won. The Bears suck again. Justin Fields got hurt, and now he's not playing on Thanksgiving. Which sucks, so it's like gives you all, all the reasons why like to not watch that game today. But uh, you know, it, it's the Baltimore Ravens needed that win. They were kind of sliding a little bit. I mean, they lost a couple of games that they probably should have won. Uh, they are seven and three, but it's like eh, I mean, this, you, they're still the favorite in that division because the Steelers are also pretty bad still. The Browns aren't quite there yet, and. Um, Cincinnati's Cincinnati got another win, so they're gonna have to be fending off of Cincinnati because they're just gonna be there at the end. I think um, probably not the Steelers, probably not the Browns either, but it's gonna be a battle between the the Ravens and the Bengals for sure on that division. Um, moving on though, the Lions lose to the Browns ten to thirteen. Lions or the the Browns just get by, which is miraculous because. I mean, the the Lions didn't even have Jared Goff. They had, uh, they had Tim Boyle, which is just I mean, like he had seventy seven yards of offense of passing yards and two interceptions. How the hell did the Browns barely beat them? They had also Nick Chubb was back, who had twenty two carries and one hundred and thirty yards. I mean, it seems like there was a lot of stuff that was happening in that game. But they just didn't show it that much in Rizzo because it was just it was so low scoring that it was just like, you know, why even watch it? I mean, like, I guess I would have to go back and check out. Maybe, you know, just shit was, you know, going bad. But t- Baker Mayfield also had two interceptions, 176 yards. But, like, I was just like, how is this team falling from grace, like, so fast and so hard? Like, truly, like, they have a good team, you know, and, and they have a good coach. At least uh, that, that's what we think. But they should be capable of scoring more than 13 points against a team like the Detroit Lions. I mean, Jesus. I mean, come on. I mean, I think that the the Browns are so much better 
than the Steelers. But even the Steelers were like having trouble with the Lions. It's just got to be like the Lions are just so desperate at this at this moment that they're sick of losing and they just need to get some kind of win. Something. They they, they got a tie. That's the only tie. Them and the, the, the Lions and the Steelers, they tied that game. And that was it. I mean, that, 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 that was just like... I mean, I mean it's, it's like, again, Dan, Dan Campbell might go, you know, 0-16-1. That's going to be, you know, another milestone in the NFL. But still, I mean, you're you're just dying for a win at that point. You need to get a win because so going so many days and so many weeks and a couple months of not winning a single football game, and I'm sure that when they're practicing and when they're training, they're like, yeah, we feel good. Well, you know, we, we feel awesome. We're going to win this game. And then they just can continue to not win. I mean, that's just going to be demoralizing. Absolutely demoralizing. I, I just don't see how they could muster up the the drive to... It's just like, I, I'm pretty sure if the Lions had an option, they would quit on this season because they're like, I just is we're just not feeling it. We're just not feeling it. Let's just forfeit the season. We'll come back next year. Hopefully, we'll have everybody back. And then we'll play better, hopefully. But you can't do that. This is the NFL. You gotta finish it off. You gotta. You gotta try. You. You have to play the seventeen games. You just gotta. But I, I guarantee you, if the the Lions were given the option, all right, you guys are really playing pretty badly. You guys just want to forfeit the season. I absolutely they should have. They they would take it. N- no shot. I mean, it. How much longer can you go? embarrassing yourself than you already have. I mean, they did go 0-16, you know, once. I don't think they want to even, like, come near, even near that. I mean, they're not going to do it this year because they've already tied. But I'm sure that they, they don't want to go near that at all, especially Dan Campbell, because he was on that team when he went 0-16, or when they went 0-16. So... It's even more stressful for him. It's like, come on, guys. Let's just get a win. Please. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Next up, we have the Texans and the Titans. I mean, if you watched this game and you saw how wet it was, how much rain was just pouring, and I mean pouring in Tennessee, you mean, I mean, like, and then the fact that Mike Vra- Vrabel, was just did not have a single other layer than his just his little sweatshirt, like a little windbreaker type of sweatshirt. No hat, no visor, no hood, and he was just absolutely soaked. Like that man could have had trench body because of how soaked he was. I mean, he must have absorbed all of that water. All of that water. He because he had to have been within like three and a half hours of just being soaked. The entire time, I'm not sure if he changed his out his clothes um, at halftime, but I would assume like he probably changed his, you know, sweatshirt maybe, but he was just soaked, and he did not want a coat either. He's like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna go down with the ship, and I'm gonna be wet. I'm gonna be super wet." And my God, did his team absolute shit the bed? I mean, first of all. You, the way that you lost to the Texans, you, you you had no points, I believe, within the first three quarters. I believe. And Ryan Tannehill, like I said, he will do this. He will have games where he can't stop throwing picks and just throw them when you just don't want them. And he'll keep throwing them. He had four interceptions this game. Four. And he miraculously, he had 323 yards, which is like... I mean, how does that even happen? That's just like, okay, we've been playing shitty for the first three quarters. Now we got to try. Now you really got to fucking try, man. Really try. But it just was not enough. And Tyrod Taylor, man, I mean, like, Jesus Christ. He had four, He went 14 for 24 and 107 yards, and they ended up winning that game. I mean, I mean, with all those picks from the Titans, it's just like, I mean, how could they not have won that game? But it's still, it's like, Tannehill still throws like over 300 yards. It's like, what? what? This game was just so bizarre. And Vrabel was fucking drenched the entire game. It's like, god damn. It's just so bad. But 
I still don't think that this game defines the Titans. I truly don't. It could have been just a bad weather game. You know, just, you know, one team just kind of just, you know, gets affected more by it than them. The Texans needed to win badly. And, you know, maybe the fucking Titans were like, we'll just fucking kid around and joke around and hopefully that we win because this, this game has fucking terrible playing conditions and we just don't want to be here right now because we're fucking drenched. And then I guess that the Titans were like, nah, motherfucker, we're going to win and we're going to beat your ass. They did. Which is still unbelievable at this point. Um, moving on. The Packers beat the uh, the Packers lose to the Vikings thirty one to thirty four. Uh, I still don't trust the Vikings because this game was just down to the wire, truly, and it was just like anybody could have won this game, and the Vikings just kind of got for me on the lucky side because I just you know Aaron Rodgers always really tries in these games, he really really does, and. Maybe it was because of his, um, you know, his toe situation. But it just, you know, it was not enough. Yes, he threw four touchdowns. But maybe it was just like he was feeling off. And maybe it was just that the Vikings were just like, you know what, man, we're not going to lose to you again. And Dalvin Cook had a pretty good game. The loss of Aaron Jones is is bad. Um... They clearly missed him because A.J. Dillon just, I mean, 11 carries and 53 yards. They really missed their run game. I think if they had Aaron Jones, it would have been more of a, a blowout, blowout and just, you know, not give the ball back to the Vikings. But, you know, you got to play with you have, who you have with. Um, unfortunately, Dillon just was not the guy to, uh, you know, bring them, bring them to the promised land and not do it. But, you know... I don't know if Aaron Jones is going to be back this week, but uh, if they don't have him back soon, they might be trouble because they need, need, need that run game because, you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, as good as he is, he you need a run game to, um, you know, help out with the passing game and just, just kind of take it off of him, take it off the receivers, receivers for a bit and just give it to Aaron Jones and just run the ball. You know, I thought that Dylan would have actually been pretty good in this game. I, I just guess he just had a bad game. I don't know. Um, Moving on. The Eagle. No, no, no. Sorry. Getting ahead of myself. The Dolphins beat the Jets 24-17 to with Joe Flacco. And, you know, he's going to be gone next game because he has COVID, I, we believe. Or he was in close contact with somebody who had COVID. So he's out. So guess who's starting this week, everybody? Yes, sir. Zach Wilson is back, and um, you know I can you know to be honest with you, and I'm gonna get to the recap of this game, but <laughs> I w- I had already forgotten about that guy. I really had already forgotten about Zach Wilson. That just shows you of how little I care about Zach Wilson, or even would even give a damn about about Zach Wilson. I just didn't give a shit. Um, he's gonna be back because the other ones are just out with COVID, COVID issues at least. Um. It's going to be interesting. But, yeah, the Dolphins played better. They've been actually, you know, stringing in together some games right now. They're 4-7, and seven, but, you know, their record is definitely doesn't show how good that they've been playing. Two has been better. Jalen Waddle has been better. Um, they're finding their stride, kind of. A little bit too late, I think. I mean, unless they can catch fire, really, and just blaze through. But, I mean, like, they still got to beat the Bills. I don't see them beating the Patriots. And it's just, like, it might be a little too late for them. But, you know, I mean, you just want to see this, though. I mean, it's good to see your team win and to see that, they, that they're that they trying and they're just not giving up because they easily could have been giving up, at, you know, during the season because Tua being out, Jacoby Brissett not playing that well, the entire team just not vibing and having really no identity. But now they're kind of getting it back and getting it back with their guy, again, Tua, who they drafted, who they wanted, Um this is good for for Dolphins fans. This is what you wanted to see for them because it would have been bad if Tua didn't work out because you you drafted him so high, you wanted him. You're like, this is our guy. The whole Deshaun Watson rumors were kind of swirling around a couple weeks ago. They didn't pick him up. 
Um, I mean, honestly, probably nobody would have picked him up, <laughs> you know, because of his situation. But, I mean, it just must feel good for Dolphins fans because they're actually winning games and actually improving and getting better with their guy, Tua. So I, it makes me happy that that's happening because it is with their guy. And they're not like, oh, fuck, we fucked up so bad that we got to get rid of our guy, Tua Tugavaloa. I mean, imagine if the, <laughs> if it wasn't with him. And it, it was like, remember when the Eagles drafted Carson Wentz and then the first, his first season, his first like 11 games or whatever, he played so well, stellar, throwing touchdowns, running for touchdowns, just being an all-time dual threat. And then he gets his ACL injury. And then after that, it's just madness and sorrow and sadness because he just, he never became that guy again, ever again. And it's like, well, he was their guy. He was for sure their guy they knew that he was their guy in that first season and then after that just went downhill completely downhill and you cannot have that with your rookie or second year or super young quarterback you just can't I mean it's it's it just destroys their mentality and their confidence and luckily Tua has been playing well that's just going to make him even better and approach the games better and be more confident that's all you can ask for really truly it is all right, the Saints lose to the Eagles 29 to 40 in a game that I wasn't not expecting that to happen. I mean, the Eagles really aren't catching fire, I got I got to say. They're now 5 and 6. I was I mean, you guys remember when I was writing say, just saying pencil in the Cowboys right now. They're going to be the ones to win the division. Nobody else has a chance. Just forget everybody else and just pencil in the Cowboys. Well, now the Cowboys have lost a few. The Eagles have won a few. Not saying that they're going to be, you know, competing against the Cowboys, really, because, you know, they still got to beat them again. But, um, or try to beat them. They lost the first time. Um, they got to, they still got to compete for that, you know, those division games, because that's really what matters. If they're really going to be, you know, you know, competing against the Cowboys, and I, right now I know that the Cowboys are a little bit, you know, depleted with their uh, players right now. Mari Cooper has got COVID. I believe C.D. Lamb is going to be out because of a concussion. Um, but yeah, I mean they're they're super super um, just like they're vulnerable right now. They really are. I mean, without C.D. without Mari, Dak just has really no threats out there. I mean, he has Michael Gallup and Dalton Schultz, but it's it's just not as wide of a threat you know, with um, CD and with Amari. So, like, the Eagles are probably going to be making some moves here. I mean, let's face it. Jalen Hurts has been playing better. Um, Miles Sanders has been running the ball good for them. And they just been, you know, it's also just like with this game in particular, the Saints really just suck. I mean, they really, really suck. I, it's, it's funny because Sean Payton just, he, this guy, I don't know what it is with this guy, but he just wants to keep everybody on his football team, even though that they're not even a good fit. Like, Trevor Simeon is not a good fit. Taysom Hill isn't just... It, I mean, what are you going to have him do? Just run a couple plays, maybe throw one or two? Like, what are you doing? You're just... You're, you're putting in slot... You're, you're keeping people, you know, you know, on your side because you just like them. They really have no purpose on your team. So when he's like... Being asked, like, what was your, you know, approach or what did you do wrong? And he gets mad about it. It's like, bro, I don't even think Sean Payton knows what he did wrong. Because the players that he have on his offense, like, I just, I, I especially at the quarterback position, it's like, dude, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I really, really don't know what you're doing. You have, I mean, I mean, you can't really sign anybody right now because, I mean, it's, you know, it's already going to be December, but it's like you you truly have nobody to play quarterback. I mean, you have a quarterback in Trevor Simeon, but he's he's not good. Taysom Hill is just a, an offensive weapon. He's not a quarterback. I mean, he can't really do, you know, quarterback things all that well. He can catch the ball. Sure, he can run it, you know, a couple of times. Throwing it, I, don't know, I wouldn't go there and, you know, say that he's a good thrower. But they're just kind of a mess. I mean, they even got back Mark Ingram. And that happened a, a couple weeks ago, but it's like, I mean, I, th I just thought that he would have been done playing football. Like, not not that he's bad, but it's just like he's older. They have Alvin Kamara. 
maybe that was it because they needed more uh, running back power because they had they, they just lost Jameis Winston. I don't know. But right now, I just I, I don't know what they're thinking. I, I really don't know what Sean Payne thinks, and I don't know what their their whole style of play is. Like, what are, what are they trying to do? Like, it just seems like they're just trying to get by every week. And just, let's just try to win. And and that's it. But it's just like they can't even do that now. So it's like, and and they're now five and five. So it's like, oof. I don't. I I, I don't know what's happening with that team. I truly don't know. Um, the Washington football team beat or lose to the Panther or beat the Panthers. Sorry, they beat the Panthers. Ron Rivera beats Cam Newton in a in just an absolute wild game. Cam Newton didn't play that uh, that well. He had two touchdowns. So Taylor Heineke, uh, on the other hand, played pretty good. Had three touchdowns, which is actually it's good because I mean they're winning now. They've won a couple games in a row, so that's good. But it's like, can they can can they sustain it? Are they getting hot too early? We still have seven more uh, weeks, I believe. Seven more games to play. I think maybe a little bit more. Uh, but it's like I don't know what's gonna happen with these guys, man. I truly don't know. It's uh, they're not gonna beat the Cowboys for sure. I truly, I, I mean, you can take off Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb and have them face the football team, and the Cowboys, Cowboys, should still win. But I, I truly don't know though. I mean, they they don't have they have Terry McLaurin, but they don't have Chase Young. I'm not sh- I it, this just might be like the fact that they're getting caught at this time and just having, you know, a pretty good run of games. I think that's what's happening. And Carolina, by the way, um Christian McCaffrey did not have a good game. I mean, Cam Newton played pretty good. McCaffrey had a pretty good game with uh rushing, but it was his receiving that was pretty I mean, what, you know, stole the show. So uh, I I don't know. He seems to be back in his dual threat um, role, but you know we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on them because they they should be better now that they looks like they got rid of that you know parasite in Sam Darnold. Not to say that he was you know fully responsible, but surely wasn't giving them any that uh, big chances to win games. Moving on though, the 49ers beat the Jags as expected. The 49ers, listen, they're legit. Now, 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 that, now that they're healthy, and with Kittle and Garoppolo and Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, they've, they've got a talented team over there in San Francisco. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo is not giving you, like, Tom Brady numbers. He's got 176 yards, two touchdowns, and, you know, not not playing like a you know a, an elite quarterback, you know, in terms of passing, but they don't need to do that. They did not have to with the Jags because they're they're the Jags, uh, and they're coached by Urban Meyer, so they 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 that that should be an automatic win, you know. I mean, somebody should have told the Bills that, but it's just it's they're legit. They scare me because they've beaten my Rams, and we got to play them again in December. So like I I'm truly this could be bad for the Rams. I mean. Especially if they still got inc- unco- in- incompetent Matthew Stafford with that receiving core, besides Cooper Cup, like I just I don't know I'm not sure because Cooper Cup and him are you know connect pretty well, but he also has Odell Beckham Jr. and Van Jefferson. It's like we got we gotta we gotta connect more. I know we have we lost Robert Woods, but it's like we have so much other talent. Like Odell, I mean like. I, I truly believe that you're talented and you're good. You gotta show me that though. Like, show me on the field. The only way you can show me on the field is if you do well in practice and you're like, yo, coach, throw me the ball. Yo, Matthew, throw me the ball. And actually catch it, make plays. I gotta see that. So if until that happens, I'm gonna consider that the 49ers are a huge threat. A huge threat. So they're they're legit. They're fully legit. And the Jags, you know, fuck the Jags. They're they're just embarrassing. Um, the Bengals beat the Raiders thirty-two to thirteen. I mean, listen, li- um, the Raiders are just back to their Raider way. They, they they really are. They did the same thing last year, and maybe even the year before that. And now this year, they start hot, and now they just lose a couple. Now they're now they're five hundred. 
you know, they already had their bye, and Rich Bisaccia is back, is coaching them. They that 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 whole that whole emotional drive after they got rid of Gruden, and after Henry Ruggs did his bullshit thing. It it's probably the 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 last of the bit of the the emotion is gone. You know what I'm saying? Like now they're back to reality. Oh shit! This is our team. This is who we have. This is who our coach is. Oh shit! Maybe we're bad. Like maybe that's kind of how I see it. Maybe they're just bad, and that's <laughs> Raiders fans are gonna be you know pissed as ever. I know my father is, and it's just like. What do we do? In the meantime, the Cincinnati Bengals are playing, you know, better, I guess. they. When you play the Raiders, it's like, it's almost like a free win. It's almost like a free win. Um, Joe Burrow played pretty decent. Uh, Joe Mixon played really, really well. 30 carries, 100 and, 123 yards, yards and two touchdowns. Played pretty good. Again, they'll be challenging the Baltimore Ravens for that, you know, division. So this is going to be wild. They've already beaten them once, so they got to beat them again. This is truly going to come down to the wire. And then we got the Cowboys losing to the Chiefs uh 19 to 9. <clears throat> Listen, I I mean there was no Amari Cooper and CD Lamb got a concussion in the game. And so pretty much there was nothing there to um feed off of. I mean, um the running game wasn't that good. Tony Pollard had um, seven carries for 50 yards. I don't know what happened to Zeke, man. I mean, I just like, I, I mean, I didn't like really, I don't think if he got hurt or anything, but he just wasn't playing well. He was getting tackled in the backfield and just not getting anything. Like he just, I don't know what's what's going on with that guy. He has it all. He's built fast. He's, he's strong, but he's just not doing his job well in running that ball forward. Um Patrick Mahomes got lucky this game. I thought that he was back, you know, after beating the Raiders, but I was wrong. He clearly is still not back. He went 23 for 37 and one interception. Um, they got out of out of the win with a just fucking, you know, a running touchdown by fucking what, what's his what's his goddamn name, uh, Travis Kelsey, and uh, Clyde edwards helaire got a touchdown. No touchdowns for uh. uh, uh Tyreek Hill, a bunch of field goals. So this is this is this is just an escape win. This is just an escape win. They didn't deserve to win, but they did win. The Cardinals beat the Seahawks twenty three to thirteen. The Seahawks are so done. Um, the, the, Russell Wilson can't throw a touchdown. He can only throw to you know to get yards, and that's it. Their red zone offense is terrible. Uh, they they truly play very uninspired football. They have no motivation. They're just dead in the water. And the fact is that I have Russell Wilson as my quarter, quarterback last week, which was absolutely terrible. I mean, I got to go back to Stafford because I cannot continue to start a man that cannot score touchdowns in the red zone when you have Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf as receivers. I just don't understand. I truly, truly do not understand what's happening here. Is it if it's if it's both? Quarterback and receivers, fine. If it's if it's just wide receivers, fine. It cannot be Russell's fault. This this finger injury, I mean, I I just I don't understand how it affects him this much. Even if it does, if it's actually his finger or his brain, I'm not sure. Truly, I have no idea. I have no idea. But it's just irritating me, and it should be irritating to Seahawks fans because this guy still has it. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. But now, this year, it's like he just can't do it. He can't do any of it. It's just frustrating. And the the the, the, the Cardinals, Colt McCoy, he had a bad game last week. He won another game this week. He won another game. He's now 2-1 and one this year. They have a bye this week. <laughs> Kyler's going to be back. Hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. I doubt it. But he's going to be back. I mean, they're 9-2. and two. They're nine and two. The Seahawks are so dead. They're so dead. And it's just uncompetitive, uninspired football. Truly, just very uncompetitive, man. It's just sad to watch. So sad to watch. Um The Chargers beat the Steelers 41 to 37. Great game, by the way. Great game. Back and forth. Um 
just just crazy crazy game down to the wire when true it, it was just so much fun to watch man it was great um big man big ben looked like he was going to be hanging in there man i mean he he was he was playing pretty well but you know the chargers are younger they got a better quarterback in my opinion they're going to be in it to the end. The, at the end of the game, the Steelers just did not have enough to get that last first down to continue their drive and just got eked out in the end. But they played; a, they had a valiant effort, but just the Chargers were just better. Final game, the Buccaneers beat the Giants 30-10, and Tom Brady was back. Last game, last week prior to this one, he looked old. He did look old. I was like, this guy's might be a little bit old now, man. Might be a little bit old. But today, or th- this game, played a lot better. Two touchdowns, one interception. But really, the Giants were not a threat at all for most of this game. I mean, they, they had a pretty comfortable lead the entire, pretty much the entire game. The Giants didn't really look threatening. Daniel Jones played bad again. Two interceptions and 167 yards. A touchdown, but just not enough. Saquon Barkley, first game back, six carries, 25 yards. I mean, it's just it's just underachieving at this point when you're talking about Saquon Barkley, just underachieving at the running back position. Truly just underachieving. You should not be getting only six carries. You should not be only running for 25 yards. I don't care if you just came back from an injury. you got to play better, especially against a good team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are very good. Now, it might be your own line, it might be you, it might be somebody else, but still, you got to be demanding. You got to be like, you know what? Fuck, I'm Saquon Barkley. I got to play better, and I got to show it. He has not been showing it at all his entire career. His entire career has been very underwhelming, in my opinion. He's had a couple good games. He's better when he catches the ball. Running the ball, he's just kind of like, eh, eh. This is the guy. This is the. This was the best running back back in the day. R- tr- really, I have. That's very hard to believe at this point. Now, I mean, like it's not his rookie year. It's not his second year. I believe it's maybe his third or his fourth. But it's like, I know you. I know that you've had injuries, ACL, ankle. I get it. But it's just like, come on. When is this guy gonna pop off? He just has not done it yet. And it's quite. The, it's quite the shame. It really is quite the shame. All right, everybody. That was the NFL portion of the show. That was it. That's the end of the episode for this week's episode. Again, I want to thank you all for listening and thank you for watching. Remember that you can find this this podcast at Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva on YouTube, Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you rate, review, uh, um, star, uh, favorite, Uh, comment subscribe and like on youtube and uh again have a happy thanksgiving everybody i hope that you enjoy it i hope you enjoy your food your family and football and anything else in between that you want to enjoy on this day i hope you enjoy it happy thanksgiving everybody and i will see you guys next week